Hello, my name is Moja and welcome to Polyglot Principles. So in Polyglot, Polyglot Principles, the goal is to help you to learn a language like a genius by applying the principles of language learning. So uh, the topic for today is going to be, I'm going to teach you an inf insanely effective method, technique that you can use to learn vocabulary really quickly and a lot of vocabulary. So. I mean, you've probably had this problem before, right? Uh, you're, learning a, you're learning a foreign language, and one of the first things that strikes you is how much you don't know. There's so many words you don't know, and the words have different forms and conjugations. It can become overwhelming, right? So, and uh, if you've been learning languages for a while, or you've done this before, then naturally you might have some techniques you've already tried. I'm really curious to know from you, what methods have you tried to learn languages? Uh, to learn vocabulary, right? So what techniques have you used? There's many techniques out there. There's a memory palace, right? Uh, that's a technique that where you associate words with a given location. Uh, there's techniques that maybe you make something look funny. There's obviously just good old brute force repetition. You repeat it until it sticks. So there's many methods out there. And I want to know what are your methods? Please add those in the comment section below. Alright, uh, now let's look at the Let's get into this. I've saved the principle for last, the method for last, because there's some things you need to understand before you can know exactly how to uh, apply this technique. So let's start with something basic, you know. We're talking about memorizing vocabulary. Natural question is, what makes things memorable? How does our brain remember things? Our brain remembers things, your mind remembers things that are memorable. That means things that, <laughs> of course it does. Your mind remembers things that are meaningful in some way. So, um, if I asked you to remember, let's say, something that happened yesterday, very likely you forgot all of the details that meant nothing to you. Maybe you forgot what breakfast you ate. Maybe you forgot, uh, I don't know, the conversation you had with your mom in the morning. You probably forgot all that stuff. And you'll remember certain things that to you stuck out. Things that to you had some meaning. Maybe if someone, if you got into a fight yesterday, chances are that very high that you're going to remember it now because it was, an, it was a meaningful event to you. It involved so much emotion. Right? So this is the key. Try to look at all the things you remember and you're going to realize that you remember them because they're meaningful to you in some way. Yes? So the key to learning or remembering something is not... This is one of the principles, right? This is polyglot principles. I teach you the principles of language learning. So here's the, here's the first principle. And I've just stated it before, we remember things that have certain meaning to us. Which means, if you wanna... Okay, just a minute, there's a lot of noise around here. Which means that if you want to remember something, you wanna make that thing meaningful in some way. If you wanna remember a word, you wanna make the word meaningful in some way. Right? So there's many techniques you can use. Um, I mean, one of the techniques people use for memorizing stuff, and it's, I have to agree, it's very effective. And that's the method of, uh, it's one of like a mnemonic device. And the method is to make the word, give the word some sort of meaning. So for example, if I want to remember what word? Um, uh, sure, you know what, I'll use one of the ones used by a polyglot already. So let's say I'm learning Spanish, and I want to remember the word playa, or playa, la playa. Right, playa means beach, uh, not beach, but <laughs> the beach. <laughs> playa means beach in, uh, in, in Spanish. And let's say I want to remember that word, right? One of the simple ways to, to remember the word is going to be to associate it, uh, to make it meaningful. So for example, the word playa looks like player, right? So this, this comes from a particular TED talk. It's just the first example I could come up with. And then you might think of a player walking on the beach. And now the word playa means something to you. If you think of the beach, you imagine a player walking on the beach and they're like, oh, playa, right? So there you've made the word meaningful. But uh, what I'm talking about is even deeper than that. Um, why, why, why would you go through the effort? Here's what I'd say. Why would you go through the effort of making a word meaningful when the word itself already has meaning? Right? This is the question, right? Like... Sure, I could, I could take a word like playa or any other word and make it meaningful, but it already has meaning, right? So, I mean, this shocked me when I learned about it, but you actually do not need to try to memorize any word. 
all you gotta do is understand the word in the context in which it is found right so if I meet the word uh, let's take the same word playa right I don't need to focus on remembering that playa means beach I just need to remember that I just need to understand it what does it mean it means the beach it maybe I could analyze a sentence El hombre está jugando en la playa, right? I just understand the sentence. It means the man is playing at the beach, right? So, by doing this, by just focusing on the meaning, what will happen is some words will stick automatically. There are certain words which you'll see once, understand their meaning, and you'll never forget them. And there are other words that you will forget, but forgetting is not a bad thing. Right? If a word is useful, it's going to come up again and again and again, and eventually you'll get it. For example, let me give you an example. Let's say someone who's trying to learn the English language. There is no need to memorize what the word and means. It's unnecessary. Why? The word and is so useful, it comes up in pretty much every conversation. Right? So if, let's say, the first time you come across the word and, you just try to understand what it means. Right? And then let's say you forget it, and you, you hear it used again. Just try to understand it again. By the time you do this three or four times, automatically it's memorized. You didn't try to memorize it, you just focused on understanding what it means. Yeah, so, and think about it, when you were a kid, I'm not saying we should learn like kids, but certain things we can learn from kids. Right? When you're a kid and you're learning your native language, you never had a vocabulary list, but you learned what words meant. Eventually, you had an... Sorry, there's noise. Uh, so eventually you, you had an extensive list and knowledge of words, right? And you didn't have any vocabulary or list for it, but you just know the words, right? Because when you were a kid, you focused on meaning. You, you tried to understand what the word, wh uh, you, you tried to understand the word, what it means. Uh, you tried to understand the, the context in which it is used. You understood the rhythm of it. And this actually brings me to another very important point. Instead of focusing on memorizing the word, focus on retaining it, focus on really two things. This is what I do. I'm going to focus on the meaning of the word, just to understand the meaning of the word and how it's used. Believing that, knowing that, if the word is really important, it will come up again. And if I do this process one, two, three or four times, the word will stick. I'm not talking from theory, I'm talking from experience because I've used this to learn thousands of vocabulary words at a shocking pace in fact okay the other thing I want you to focus on is when you get a new word that you're trying to learn or memorize don't memorize it but focus on the rhythm of the word when I say rhythm what do I mean a language is a piece of music <laughs> it sound organized in a particular way yes so did you ever notice something like when you were a kid that you could remember the lyrics of a song without having really tried to memorize the lyrics you just, you know, kind of just, I mean, maybe here's a better example, right? So, if you grew up in an English-speaking country, maybe you were taught the alphabet in a particular order. And when I was taught the alphabet, they taught us using the song A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N. It was a song. It was a rhythm. And the rhythm, just by learning the song, it became automatic that I learned the contents of that song, which was the alphabet. Every word has music, it has a musicality to it, right? So what I usually focus on is when I get a new word, I'm going to focus on pronouncing it correctly. Maybe if I say it in a sentence, focus on pronouncing it with the right intonation within the sentence and just focus on understanding what it means within the sentence. Then I don't give a crap whether I remember it or not. Sometimes I remember it, sometimes I don't, right? And this brings me to, again, um, Another important concept, I'm going really deep with you guys today. Another important concept is this. Right, so not every word is useful, right? There are certain useless words that no one uses. Like, uh, there's certain words in English, like bamboozled, gobsmacked. When in your life do you ever have to use the word bamboozled or gobsmacked? Unless you're like some literary, literary type, maybe you write... Uh, you write uh, fiction books or something, but usually if you're a normal person using the English language, you never have to use a word like gobsmacked or uh, bamboozled, right? Oh, this is a hypochondriacal experience. You don't need to use those words, right? So what I'd say is that those words for most people are useless. Very likely those words are useless for you. Now, what you want to learn in a language is useful words. 
what makes a word useful? When we say a word is useful, what does useful mean? Something is useful if we use it frequently. Right? It's, it's something that we need frequently. If we don't have it, we somehow can't communicate effectively. That's useful. When it comes to words, the most frequently used words are the useful ones. Right? And you don't need to spend time memorizing frequently used words. Why? Why don't you need to do that? Because they will show up frequently. Right? This kind of sounds obvious, isn't it? Frequent, frequent words show up frequently. No need to waste time trying to memorize them. They will show up, if you focus on understanding them and understanding the rhythm of them, eventually you're going to learn them. It's, you're gonna, it's going to take maybe one, two, three, four times for it to occur and you have it memorized. Right? And the, the really cool thing about this is that once you, understand, once you understand a word and understand how to use it, one day you'll just be surprised in a conversation to find yourself using the word, right? Without you like thinking about it, you just use it because it's the most natural thing to do. This, so this, this is key. This is the principle of meaning. You focus on the meaning and the information needed to express that meaning is automatically memorized. All right, so I've gone in a lot of detail here. Now, uh, every day, uh, I hope you, I don't know if you like this video. If you did, please give it a, give it a thumbs up and uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification. Ding, 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 ding. That way you'll be notified whenever I publish uh, a new video. I usually publish a video every single Monday at 8 a.m. Central African time. So <laughs> see, see you next Monday. Bye.